Lupiculus Lalias. I have moved them out of my prime real estate location to the very, very hot side, the east facing side of the property where I have my top guns living. And the reason I've done that is because they are now super acclimatized. They are growing of their own free will and they can take some serious heat with a lot of light, not direct sun at this point, but a lot of light. And I needed the space in the other area. So what I thought, actually, what is happening today is I was geeking out with the orchid room on Instagram regarding these cute little chubby rock dwellers. And it turns out we were about to update at the same time. So basically, what we're gonna do is upload our videos on the same day to flood the market, so to speak, <laughs> for the lack of a better term, with information about these beautiful little mini Lelias. And in my opinion, there is not enough, enough, enough information about them out there. So what we're gonna do is change that, at least for one day, before I bring them out and we can have a look at them closely. I'm just going to mist them down a bit because the air is super hot. I only have 45% humidity today. And then I'll pull them out. So hopefully our little plan works that you get the idea of these gorgeous little ladies from two different growing aspects. I'm down here in the Mediterranean, very close to Gibraltar and then uh, up from the UK with the orchid room. So I'm gonna pull them out and let's have a look. Okie dokie. I've brought them all up from their shelf, which is basically down there, that line there. Well, let me just go one by one and let's have a look. Alvarguensis is not growing a new growth but I can see that there's roots. There's a big, chunky, chubby, yummy root right down in there inside that lava rock. So what I'm gonna do, as it is the season, who doesn't want their feet in sand? Who doesn't like to put their feet into the sand? Especially if you've been in a lockdown, let's go to the beach. So what I'm gonna do is just put some sand around here. Seeing as these are rock dwellers and I'm trying to emulate a little bit their climate and their environment, their sand will bit by bit peter down and become part of the mix down there. And it's also very, very water retentive. This sand was in a bag, even though it was out in the sun, it's wet. So that's exactly what I want and I think so far, we're doing quite well with this concept. No root growth on the surface, but underneath I have the Alvariguenses doing really well. And this was the little growth back in the day when I started my YouTube channel two months ago. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Not a single leaf has dropped. So let's move our Alvariguenses out of the way and have a look at Rupestris. Repestris is giving me a little bit of a headache. Just a little bit because it's not doing anything positive. It's doing something because I'm losing this back bulb leaf. One thing it has changed is that that growth that it came with, it was down here. So it's progressing. The bulb will maintain similar height, but the leaf won't. So I suppose I should just give it a break and let it do its thing because clearly it needs the energy from the back bulb. So that's why it's dropping the leaf. I don't know if there's any root action going on because I grow them in small lava rock with ceramics mainly. I have two examples that are different because I wanted to test the waters. But um, yeah, from what I'm seeing, it is just taking up the energy from this back end and putting it into here. So I'm hoping if I tug it, no, it's very loose. 
So I'm going to leave it. I'm hoping that it will do something positive regarding roots once the growth is mature. Maybe that is its growth pattern. I don't know. These have been with me uh, not even a year. So I'm learning on them. So this is Giuliani. Or Giuliani. With a Y and E at the end. Doing nicely. I can see right here new root growth. The back end of course is wobbly. There's nothing. But here I have new root growth in that little area there and this little new growth is maturing quite nicely as well so there's no deterioration Giuliania is doing well as it is very hot and dry you can see I initially had some sand here it's dissipated down into the lava rock I'm just gonna add a bit more just to give that root a little bit of protection. Okie dokie. Who's next? Up next, Fornery. Fornery is doing okay. Its little growth has matured somewhat. Much smaller than what it was before. That's understandable. But we can see some root action. Down there, a small root tip. For these little guys, that's all it takes. They are not big orchids, as you can tell. They are miniatures in true form. They have extremely, extremely solid leaves and bulbs. That's a lot of storage that they can retain for times of struggle and difficulty. These two bulbs, if I remember correctly, I lost a leaf here. These two came without a leaf, and this leaf I lost. Which is to be expected when you get an orchid that has no roots and is growing a growth. So somewhere they've got to get their energy from. We have root growth in there though, which was visible on the surface. And here you are, Kautskiana. Kaut and you would think it's not doing much, but look. Right here is a little nubbin. And that is doing something. It's going to come. It's going to be all right. Whether I have roots in the pot, I don't know. But as you can see, I'm being very gentle because I don't want to disturb it too much. I lost a leaf in the back here. This bulb dropped a leaf, but we're okay. Maybe from a profile side. Hang on a second, you can see it better. There. Yep, it's going to be all right. If I do my job properly with them, it's going to be all right. And what I mean by doing my job properly with them is that I spray them down in the morning and mid-afternoon early evening especially in the summer because I want them to be able to benefit from what they get in nature the dew point normally it doesn't rain in their environment but they do thrive on the dew and if I don't have that humidity in my climate I have to provide it and that's why I spray them down and that's what you saw in the beginning I'm giving them their dew point to move into the evening and by that time they'll be dried out before the night comes. In my case, it's nice and warm. I have no issues with doing it two or three times a day if need be, because I'm going to show you. Let's try show you this one first, basically to run on that point. This is two pieces of Flavusalina. Flavasolina. The dyslexia in me. Good grief. Flava Solina. So this is two pieces. In my other video, these two growths were doing really well. They were growing out of nowhere and they have matured smaller. That's fine, but they didn't stall and they didn't take back any of their leaves. So that's perfect. I'm really pleased about that. And the reason I am because in here I have Lekka and Ceramis and I'm sorry about my dog and the cars. 
In here I have lacquer and ceramics. And that is an experiment because I wanted to know for future reference, if I run out of lava rock, do I really need to buy a huge bag of lava rock, maybe for one or two plants, or will they be able to sustain in lacquer and ceramics? Point being, if I run out of ceramics one day and I want more rapiculous lalias, will they be able to thrive in lekka only? So these are two, my, two of my test subjects based on having to invest for something that basically if I just want two or three more. Because I am actually anticipating an order from Floraria, but uh, world circumstances have uh, delayed all that. So maybe by July, August. Yeah, I hope they delay it even further. I do not like getting orchids in the months of July and August, not in my climate. So I don't know. But anyway, I digress. This one, Flavasolina, two pieces. So they're doing, this one's doing fine. But here, look, the back part is starting to make a move as well. Let me lift it up and see if we can get it a bit closer. And if you can see these two little growths here, one right there and one right there. I hope so. I can only tell when I'm editing. But trust me, I've got two new growths coming on the back piece, which was absolutely rootless as well. And it's only being propped up by this little lava rock that's right here, so it doesn't topple forward. So this is doing, I'm happy, really happy. It's doing well also because it's not drawing as yet any energy from the back and it's producing two new growths. So yay, let's go Flava Solina. So does this need some sand? I'm just going to put some over here on the outer edges because that's where the lecker dries out fast. And I don't want to keep dousing this simply to keep the lecker damp. If I give it its dew point, that's all I want to give it. I don't want to keep dousing this because these new growths are very precious to me. Even though these have matured and they will dry out much faster. I don't want to keep thinking, oh my goodness, my lecker has gone dry. So let's put some sand on there. I hope all that was in shot. If not, all I'm doing is putting sand around the areas and keeping the new growths clear and free of any too much water retention. Por si acaso, just in case. So, Flava Sulina, thank you very much for trying. Okay, Flava, Dahlia Flava. I've got new root growth coming which is fantastic, much needed. I've lost a leaf back here because it's got no, had nothing to sustain it with and you can see how dehydrated the leaf is. They all are, it's trying. These are two new growths that came with, but they were rootless. So what I'm gonna do here also to combat the humidity on the lecker's front is just plop some sand in the area where in other parts I would put sphagnum moss, but in this case, I don't want that. Just be careful there. I know there's one new growth coming. That's right here. There's a new growth, but what is going on here? Are you doing another one? No, but there's another root and I'm just gonna cover it up. Eventually the sand will dissipate into the lacquer, that's fine. I can always replace it. No, this is not sand from the beach. This is for um, a salt water the purification system for a swimming pool. So it's not salted sand. Okay, next. Crispy Lavia, doing fantastic. I love this little guy. He's giving me hope because we have a new growth coming that is recent. It had stalled over time. And down here you can see the creeping habit of a root. You see that white spot in there? Yes, and there's more. I can at least tell from this angle 
that I have three roots shooting out of that growth with a little sheath, which may not do anything at all, but it gives me an indicator as to when this little guy produces roots. And you look in the back here, there's another one growing towards us. Fantastic. So these roots come from the latest bulb, not the new one. That's awesome. I will definitely make a note of that because when it comes to repotting, that is useful information. Seeing as you can see, I am sorry about the screeching. That could be triggering for someone. Sorry about that. Seeing as I'm uh, growing these just in the rocks in a semi-hydro format, I, um, I, don't, I don't see the roots, so I would be guessing, which is great news for crispy labia. Now I know it's growth habit, root on the root fry. We did fornery. Let's have a look at Esalkiana. Oh, uh, is not doing anything. And when I say that in my channel, in my jargon, that is good news. It's not necessarily bad news. It's looking healthy. Maybe there's more action in the pot than I can tell from the surface. But as long as I have no shriveling, no drying up of the leaves or anything, I don't mind if there is no root growth. I can see that it is just tickety-boo and it's biding its time. Maybe it needs a little bit more time to acclimatize. So, a salkiana, I do not see it as sulking, <laughs> pardon the pun, but there's no activity either. Let me get, I think this is Regentii. No, it's not, of course it's not, it's Ketiana. Ketiana was doing well from Jump Street, and I was really pleased about that because it gave me hope in the early stages of my owning these orchids. This little growth here is now maturing and it's doing fantastic. I can't see any root growth from my angle, but it wouldn't be looking like this, all stiff and firm and not shriveled or dying back if there wasn't already something going on down there. I'm just going to give it a little bit of help in that area with regards to some water retention. So, Ketiana, fabulous. It's doing really well, I'm glad. And we've got lots of cars. I know, right? Thank you for being patient with me. And this is Regina, or Regina. And I am really happy to say, Regina is picking up because, oh, just one moment, this is annoying. I was a bit concerned because things started to look a little bit too dehydrated for my liking. Yeah, it was rootless. Basically, you can say that about all of them. But uh, I also lost some leaves back here, maybe one or two. This root kept trying, starting, trying, stopping. But here in the front, we now have our new growth, which I've already noted down. When the new growth starts to mature, it shoots out its roots and there's another one coming, either a root or a new growth right there. So I have two root leads and there's a little green nubbin right there. It could be a new growth. I would be very surprised because that's very soon one after the other. But hey, why shouldn't it if it likes its environment suddenly? In the back, I thought I saw on this one that something was happening. I might be mistaken. But uh, maybe I was mistaken. There was one where I thought, well, hello. Maybe that was the previous one and I'm just now overthinking things. But um, yeah, Regina, just a little bit of sand to protect the roots a little bit. You see the ceramics here? Yeah, and that was after spraying it. So that is something I want to avoid by putting a little bit of sand in that area and this would be only the second time I've put sand into these pots I have not done this on a regular basis because I don't want just a sandy media at the bottom of the pots 
but just for to, to help them along to kickstart them get them set up in a proper manner that's why I'm doing the sand and uh, I love these little guys so my climate is five degrees Celsius in the winter that's the minimum I've experienced here in 28 years of living on the co on the coast my hottest is whatever the Spanish summer throws at us it can be just 30 degrees but it can go way above as well so I always say 35 on up because very rarely do we get 40 41 it happens but that is the conditions that they have to consider and I have to consider for them because I do not get much humidity here and for that reason, I have to adapt a little bit what I do to them, especially in the beginning as they're finicky and young and need to get established. It's not like they are difficult to grow. I am sure that once these guys take off properly in this environment with the climate and they become strong in their root production, I don't even have to worry about them anymore. My first one to repot as my consideration is the Lelia Regina because if this is vigorous and it starts to do what I think it's doing down there, yeah, that pot is already too small. I'll take you along for the ride, maybe next year. <laughs> the other guys, because of their beautiful little compact growing habit, they can stay in their pots for several years. So I have very low humidity. I have very hot temperatures. They get direct morning sun uh, the first two hours, eight to 10, and then I put down the curtain and then they're in super bright shade. And some of these guys can actually live outside in the winter as well. I have as yet to figure out which ones, but some of them are warm to cool growers. So that to me gives me the opportunity to grow some of them outside. I just wonder if I have the ones that do that. So just to take advantage of the warm breeze and the fact that now there's sand on top, it can dry out with plenty of time before it's nighty night. If you have any questions regarding the Rupiculus Lelias, let me know. I will be more than happy to answer them. I'm sorry I'm not showing any bloom pictures. I'm extremely wary of the YouTube copyright issues. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try and avoid all that as much as possible. You never know what else can happen unbeknownst. But if I can eliminate a possible copyright issue by using pictures I shouldn't be, I don't know the difference. Um, there are no blooms. But I hope that this gave you anyway a little insight into how I grow my Rapiculus lelias here on the Mediterranean coast of Spain. And it will be exciting to watch the orchid rooms video and see what she does and well you know her room that's where miracles happen so <laughs> if all else fails go and have a look and see and then compare and maybe let us know um, what you think about the individual growing methods if you have your own ideas suggestions and you're growing these also leave it in the comments below I'll be super interested Thank you everybody for watching and uh, joining me on this little update of my Rapiculus Lelias and I hope that you enjoy the fact that uh, we have combined this little update on both of our collections on the same day to give you a, a fresh opinion of two different variables. Appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. Stay safe and I'll see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.